On this edition of Manned Space, we meet the father of Apollo flame-proof materials and look at a collectible he helped to create. In 1967, NASA was very close to launching the first manned flight of the Apollo program. Dubbed Apollo 1, the mission was to be a checkout flight of the new Apollo spacecraft. Scheduled to launch on February 21, 1967, Apollo 1 was to be commanded by veteran Project Mercury astronaut Gus Grissom. This was to be Grissom's third space flight. Joining Grissom was to be Edward White, a veteran of one space flight, White was the first American to walk in space. Rounding out the crew was Roger Chaffee. Apollo 1 would be Chaffee's first space flight. On January 27, 1967, the crew of Apollo 1 had taken their seats in their Apollo spacecraft high atop a Saturn 1B launch vehicle situated on Launch Complex 34. They were participating in a simulated countdown. Communications between the spacecraft and the blockhouse housing launch controllers were intermittent on this day. While ground crews attempted to fix the communications problem, the call of fire was heard coming from the spacecraft over the radio. Seconds later, Roger Chaffee could be heard saying, we've got a fire in the cockpit. Then another voice was heard to say, we've got a bad fire, we're burning up and then there was silence. In seconds, the crew was overcome by acrid smoke in the cockpit. The three men died in their spacecraft without ever leaving the ground. In the days that followed, Grissom, White, and Chaffee were laid to rest. A thorough fact-finding investigation was undertaken. The precise event that caused the fire was never determined, however several conditions were cited as factors that led to the deaths of the astronauts. Among the problems identified was the proliferation of combustible materials in the spacecraft cabin, as well as the spacesuits worn by the astronauts. Materials selection, substitution, and stowage inside the Apollo spacecraft were thoroughly restudied. It was determined that all cloth parts were to be replaced. NASA turned to the Manned Spacecraft Center's Materials Development Section and its chief, Dr. Frederick Dawn, for the selection of the replacement materials. Referred to ultimately as the father of Apollo flame-proof materials, Dr. Dawn was responsible for the development of flame-proof, non-metallic materials which would be used for spacesuits and spacecraft applications. Interest in a material called Beta Fiber started at NASA as early as the Gemini program. Developed by Corning Glassworks in conjunction with the team headed by Dr. Dawn, Beta Fiber is an inorganic substance that will not catch fire nor produce toxic fumes. It is essentially a form of fiberglass coated with Teflon. It became one of the most widely used textiles in the Apollo Command Module. It was also used extensively in the Lunar Module. It replaced nylon as a major component in the construction of the Apollo spacesuits. Employed on Skylab, it was used in the construction of a shower curtain for the shower aboard the space station. The cargo bay on board the space shuttle was lined with the material, and it is still used today aboard the International Space Station. We're looking at a collectible made possible by Dr. Dawn and his team. It is a section of beta cloth measuring 9 inches by 9 inches. It is imprinted with the mission insignia of Apollo 16. The 10th man flight of Project Apollo, Apollo 16 was the next to last mission of the program. In addition to the mission patch, the beta cloth is signed by Apollo 16 lunar module pilot Charlie Duke. Duke is shown here signing the section of beta cloth. According to Duke, the Apollo 16 mission insignia incorporates patriotism, teamwork, and the moon. 
Finally, the beta cloth includes a postage stamp celebrating a decade of achievement in the manned space program and is postmarked in Houston on April 20th, 1972, the date of Apollo 16's lunar landing. Thank you to Dr. Frederick Dawn for his contribution to the space program and for making this fine collectible possible. Did you know about NASA's use of beta fiber? Do you know about other materials used to make the Apollo spacecraft a safer environment? If so, tell us about it in the comments section. Thanks again for watching Man's Space. Please watch for upcoming videos at least twice a week, during which I'll discuss the history of the space program by highlighting artifacts and memorabilia from my extensive space collection. Also, please like, subscribe, and click the notification button for more great content about manned space.